So uh, when we made our trip to Computex, we decided it would also be wise to check out mainland China and see some factories over there. So we specifically went to the Adata factory. Adata is one of the largest manufacturers of uh, memory modules in the world. They're getting into some new things. They've got LED lighting and that sort of thing. Uh, so we took some time to go over there and look at that. And we also decided to look at the area. Actually, Adata helped uh, show us around a little bit. It was actually an a pretty awesome experience that changed me in many ways. When we first got to the Adata factory, well, first off, it was a really, really large factory, and I'm not sure if a lot of you guys realize how large they actually are, because some of you guys uh, equate the size of a company to the to the you know the amount of things that you see on a shelf, but that's not what makes Adata Adata. They put a lot of um, work into their B2B relationships. They have a lot of stuff that's just an SOC that goes straight into a laptop that you never physically see. They have a lot of parts that that uh, you know are installed into an industrial places. So the place was really big um, the, you know the lobby was really nice had all their awards and everything in it and then they had a, a really interesting small mock-up of their entire campus uh, and and plus they had like you know some of the areas they were expanding the third stage is one and two but is the uh, maybe the end of this year uh, we have to start to build uh, these two buildings and their campus consists of, you know, different factories, uh, quality assurance places, and even some dorms for the, for, the, for the workers that live there. One cycle, roughly to say, one cycle around 1,500 meters. Hmm. So two cycle, 3,000 meters. The, the first thing that we, we got to see when we went into, into the factory is, you know, we, we sat down, we went to the lobby, we sat down, we had a short little presentation where they talked about, you know, talked about 8 they talked about, uh, you know, what they do and where they're going. And it was kind of like, it was really good to just kind of get that, um, get that feel for where they, you know, where they're presenting themselves to us. And then we proceeded to go and we got a nice little tour of their LED section, which was everything from the manufacturer, or I'm sorry, the, the, they receive the LEDs, they actually uh, they get the LEDs elsewhere, but then they use the, a very specific uh, module and they build uh, the housing and they build the, um, the, the, the device that they're actually going to use. And most of the LEDs are everything from desk lamps to uh, like ceiling office lighting all the way to uh, industrial lighting like you'd see, like, uh, like street lights. First off, they have these, these certain modules that they use and they're, they're, they're waterproof, they test them like crazy, they sandblast them for hours, they have this really, really cool machines. I was actually just like, I'd like to stay here and watch these machines blast everything with water and sand. It's kind of fun to watch, but um, you know, they have these modules that are a, a bunch of LEDs and then on top of that, there are several different lenses, like tiny little lenses all over the place and those lenses help to, number one, help to amplify the light a little bit and then also help to direct the light so that it uh, spreads over a large even area and uh, the difference between that like so I'm talking mainly about like their street lights because that's a that's a huge area that we really need to improve as far as just global infrastructure a lot of the street lights are old technology that use a ton of power uh, and I think that's something that they see they look at this and they're like well, you know, we're going to get into some homes with the LED technology, LED, LED lamps and that sort of thing. But, you know, as far as industry goes, a lot of people are going to move to LEDs, even if the initial cost is slightly higher than the initial cost of legacy stuff. It's going to save a lot of money over time. So they're looking at partnering with cities and that sort of thing to get their uh, LED lights out there. And uh, yeah, they were just just some of the stuff they were showing was really, really robust. Even the power drivers were waterproof. You know, they're spraying water on all these like electrical cables. It's like, what's going on here, man? They're even dipping them in water. It was like uh, pretty, pretty freaky. But the other thing that's kind of um, interesting about the LEDs, they're making stuff that replaces just about any office type lights, even the halogen lights and and that sort of thing. But um, the uh, the the quality of light you get is a bit different. Uh, a much uh, I guess softer light or, or even like a wider light compared to like the greens and yellows you get from some of the stuff that's in offices. So it should be better for a lot of the employees' eyes as well. Um, but yeah, that was a, a kind of a big focus on the trip was LED lighting. And, and, all of, and then, like I was thinking, we were gonna be looking at SSDs and RAM the entire time, but no, LED lighting was a really big focus. So it's, it's not like the, you know, the testing procedures that these guys use for this, this equipment, I mean, this was across the board. The testing that they go through for every single device is, is pretty intense and pretty, uh, pretty extravagant. So let's go ahead and talk about like um, the flash memory. Um, they have RAM modules. They make a lot of things in house, uh, but they, they get their PCB uh, wafers from one place, depending on who, who, whoever it is, you know, different suppliers, Micron supplies a lot of it, and then they get their actual uh, NAND memory from, from elsewhere, then they put them together there and they do all their quality testing, they cut the wafers and that sort of thing. Um, but a, a lot of what's going on here is, is testing because, you know, you can, you can make RAM all day long, and if you make high quality RAM, that's a good thing, but uh, they actually test every single 
piece of RAM, every single piece of memory. It all goes into, into a machine that tests it up to 100 degrees C and all the way down to zero degrees. I mean, they just do a ton of testing on this stuff. So um, I'm not sure if they test everything at those extremes, but they, but they test for like voltage leaks and that sort of thing, just to make sure that every piece that they send out um, it gets the number one bin correctly and then they spec it and put it in whatever applicable packaging uh, but also just to make sure that you know when you get something uh, that you know that it's going to work because it's been tested so the human element the price has gone up a little bit so they've actually replaced some of their employees um, I'm not sure 15 20 percent of their employees with uh, automated processes so a lot of the really mundane tasks of testing and that sort of thing are now being taken care of by robotic processes or just assembly line things that are completely automated. The, uh, the, the procedure that we got to watch, because the memory was probably one of the more thorough procedures that we got to watch, like the full, we got to see an entire assembly line from the moment where they, they drop the, the, they've got, you know, they've got a machine that's filled with the, the NAND memory and they load the, mem you know, they load the, the PCB in one end and it's got like a whole stack of PCBs and it just loads the first one off of the tray and then it places the memory, all computerized, it places the memory onto the PCB and then loads it through the wave, I'm like, this goes from that machine into the wave soldering station, which is just this big, you know, basically it's a big oven and it processes through that, comes out the other side and then it's, uh, it's taken from there and then loaded into a, uh, it's, it's passed from there to another machine that cuts the memory down to size. So you actually have four, four modules on each PCB and then it cuts them down uh, to each individual, puts them in trays, hands that off to the next uh, station where it's actually manually taken, like a person comes along, picks the tray up, moves it somewhere else and says, okay, we now have to load these into the, the new, the new, uh, the new, the new piece of the automation that then takes it and then runs through the the heat tests. It runs through the voltage tests. It actually charges the entire thing. It just it doesn't do a uh, this specific machine didn't do a, a full um, like like uh, memory. It didn't test the memory, but it tested the electrical current through the entire thing and had a whole process that it was testing. It was pretty pretty extravagant and it was it was very very impressive. And then they went from there. It went to. Uh, um, there was like two or three testing stages where they went through after they, they made, the, uh, made the actual module. And it gets handed off to a guy who has an entire row of, of test bench workstations, where it's basically just a motherboard, power supply, and a, a small monitor that's running like mem test. And he physically loads the memory into this motherboard, and almost it's almost like a real world simulation, boots it up, and goes down this line. So he's just got this long line of stuff and he just takes this tray of memory and loads it in. He's got static sensitive, uh, you know, static, static free uh, gloves on. He's wearing a, a gown and he just, it's what he does all day. I guess the one, the one thing that I wish we could have done that we really didn't get to do is we didn't get to talk to any of the employees that were like on the assembly line floor. They looked like they were being well taken care of. They didn't look, you know, like, uh, it, looked, it looked like any assembly line I, I would have imagined in like Germany or America or any other country. It didn't look like a very fun job because you're doing a repetitive thing all day, but I would have loved to just like said, hey man, how are you? I'm not sure if there would have been a language barrier or not. I'm sure some of them could have, could have spoken to us in English or even if it was broken English, but I, I think it would have been really interesting just to talk to some of the people there on the floor and just see what, you know, what things were like there, uh, especially someone who lived in the dorms, just see like, hey, what do you guys do? What's fun? Do you, I see you guys have a basketball court or whatever. What, what's life like here? I, I like, you know, the human element of everything. So maybe if we go back, it'd be really cool to actually get to chat with some of the people who work there on the assembly line and just see what they think. I want to say they said that uh, there was like, what was it? I think it was 40% of the workforce lives on site. Yeah, something like that. And that's uh, and that's mostly your assembly line workers. There's a few others, a uh, few of the other exec staffs and supervisors that live there as well. Um, and then there's uh, you've got, you know, and that was not that's not all assembly line workers. I mean, it is it is an office building. It is a, a factory. So there are other um, there are other pieces. You know, they've got you know lunch crew. You've got you know, you've got food. You've got you know cafeteria. All that other kind of stuff is built into it. You did, like I said, they have a basketball court. They had security. Um, I mean, they were, there was a lot more than just people on the assembly line. That's pretty much what we did the, the first day there. We, we took a really good tour, then we went out and uh, just started looking around China. Like, they, they got us a bus and we just kind of toured around. Uh, we landed in Shanghai, and if you guys have never been in, out of the country, when you first land, it's like landing in Blade Runner or something. It's so far ahead, you know, like most of the stuff's new. They don't have any legacy BS to worry about, so... Yeah, we landed there, the airport was crazy, and then from there we went to Suzhou, and um, that's another huge city. Both of these cities are like bigger than New York, Shanghai's two or three times the size, and Suzhou's uh, 
three times as big as New York or whatever. But and that's and that's physical, huge. Matt. That's like physical size. I mean, the I think the population of Suzhou. I'm sorry, the population of Shanghai was like what 24 million 24. people. Yeah. And Suzhou is like 12 million, so it's big. It's a bit bigger than New York City. There's a lot, a lot of people there. Oh yeah. Yeah, but anyway, so we got to look around there. I, I forgot what we did. We went to. Um, I guess we we a lot of buffets because that makes everybody happy. Just like the, the Chinese food there is not the Chinese food you get in whatever country you're in, unless you're somewhere in Asia, probably. Uh, that was a bit different, but I don't really want to get into that. That's kind of the boring stuff. We went to some temples uh, and looked around. Um, Han Shan Temple, uh, very interesting temple. I mean, like we're talking, this has been there for what, over a thousand years, maybe or possibly more. Um, I forget. I want to look that up actually while we're sitting here. Uh, yeah, I mean. For, for someone who's lived in a, a country that all, you know, all the history in the USA is a few hundred years old at most. And we, we tend to like to destroy that stuff and build shiny new things like BCBG and TCBY and whatever, TGIF and all these other acronym restaurants and places. Yeah. It's 1500 years old. Oh, only 1,500 years old. Only, so only 1,500 years old. And I just, I just want to, I'm looking at Wikipedia here just because it's, it's where the, the information is easily prevalent. And I'm going to butcher this. It was uh, Emperor, um, uh, Emperor Wu of Liang um, and the Southern and Northern Dynasties. I mean, it was, it's, yeah, 502 to 519, I think, is when uh, the temple was supposedly founded. I mean, it's, it's old. <laughs> it's been around for a while. So we did that, um, and you guys are seeing B-roll on the screen, obviously, of us hanging out there, uh, ring, ringing the bell in, in the top, and I'm sure there's a significance that we just didn't get because we're idiot foreigners. Um, and there's a word for that, I believe, uh, that I'm not going to say right now. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> um, after that, uh, I mean, we did a lot of the touristy stuff. Next time I go back, I'm just going to go wander around until I get myself into trouble. But this time we did check out a lot of tourist stuff. But um, we also checked out uh, the Rich Man's Garden. I'm not, I'm not sure... He has several, you know, acres, and it's a garden, and I forgot the name of it, but that was pretty fascinating as well in a small part of, part of town. Yeah, the, um, the only thing I remember was when the tour guide was describing it to us, because I, I, anything that was, uh, any, like, the names, uh, I couldn't register. They didn't actually register his words, because I'm a, you know, dumb English speaker. Uh, <laughs> but the, she basically, she gets to the end of it, she goes, basically, this, you know, this was a garden, and he was basically a rich guy. He, he was, like, a merchant or something, but he had a lot of money, so he had the six-acre garden that was, you know, when he, she said, he goes, when he comes home from work or whatever it is that he does, and he doesn't want to have to interact with his wife or his kids, he goes through the garden and just gets lost, which is great. I would love to do that. Just go home <laughs> and get lost in my garden. I'll tell you where I wanted to get lost was, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher this name, and all of the, uh, the native speakers are going to yell at me, but it's... Um, Zhuzhong, is that it? Zhuzhong. 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 Um, and that is sort of an ancient preserved city that has a lot of modern stuff, like there was a Starbucks in there, which kind of blew my mind because you're walking through this and it looks like, you know, an ancient city from a, a, a movie or something like that. Uh, and it's also known as the Venice of the East because there are waterways and canalways, and you, we basically took a gondola ride. <laughs> We just rode around the city, really beautiful, but it was kind of an interesting way to see uh, how things used to be in that part of the world. So yeah, that, that city was, I mean, pretty unbelievable. And all in all, the, the whole trip was um, eye-opening in many ways. As far as actual travel goes, it will be nice to go back. I, that's the, As soon as I landed, I was like, well, I need to go back now because I feel like I've seen things through the eyes of a tourist, but now I want to go over there and just see things through unfettered eyes and just be able to go and come as I please and, and, and really get a, a good look around. So maybe we'll get into some things over there that will take Texan to get back to mainland China, Taipei as well, you know, the, all, all those areas over there, Taipei, when, when Malaysia, Japan. Let's just go over there and have a little fun. Uh, I'm kind of curious to know what you guys would think. There's lots of technology uh, in that area that we could cover. And a lot of it you guys have never seen or heard about. And the stereotypes by and large are not true. Some of them are but um, that's another thing I'd like to investigate more. So um, that was our trip to China. Special thanks to Adata for uh, lo allowing us to come and take a look at their factory. Uh, we would love to come back sometime uh, and take another look in the future. So yeah, Adata, thanks very much. And uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments. We'll see you guys in the next video.
，拿这个给你拆了，这个就是叫他说中文。走吧走吧走吧走吧。我可以下课了。他在等你啊，他在等你说话啊。I always had a hard time swallowing that one. Ah, oh, I don't know how people can drink piss like this. Not that that sweat's much better. I'm gonna switch from piss to sweat. 